हेलो गाइस वेलकम और वेलकम बैक टू लॉस रॉमिंग प्लेटफॉर्म मैं हूँ शालिनी और आज के इस वीडियो में हम स्टार्ट करेंगे इंडियन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट को बट बिफोर दैट इफ यू न्यू टू दिस चैनल देन प्लीज क्लिक ऑन द सब्सक्राइब बटन एंड ऑल्सो हिट द बेल आइकॉन सो दैट एवरी टाइम अपलोड न्यू वीडियो यू गेट नोटिफाइड सो इन टूडेज वीडियो वील बेसिकली टेक एन ओवर व्यू ऑफ इंडियन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट सो इंडियन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट केम इन टू फर्स एंड फर्स्ट सेप्टेम्बर एटीन सेवेंटी टू The nature of Indian Contract Act is that it is private law and it is based on English common law. There are total eleven chapters in Indian Contract Act. However, Chapter Seven, which deals with Sale of Goods Act, and Chapter Eleven, which deals with Partnership Act, were repealed in the year nineteen thirty and thirty two, respectively. And then these two act became an independent act. All right. So, what is a contract? If we try to find the answer to this question in the text of the Indian Contract Act. then we find that section 2h defines the term contract it says an agreement that is enforceable by law is known as a contract so the important element of this definition is agreement and enforceability so we can say in simple words contract equals agreement plus enforceability then the question arises what is agreement so section 2e defines agreement as every promise and every set of promises forming the consideration for each other is an agreement all right so if we again take the important element of the definition agreement the first important element is promise and the second is consideration now what is a promise promise is a proposal when accepted it becomes promise as per section 2b so promise is nothing but proposal plus acceptance of that proposal then consideration is defined under section 2d and it says that when at the desire of the promiser the promisee or any other person has done or abstained from doing or does or abstain from doing or promises to do or abstain from doing something then such act or abstinence or promise is called a consideration for the promise we will deal with the definition of consideration at length when we'll separately take up consideration but for now we can define agreement as valid offer or proposal plus valid acceptance plus lawful consideration all right now every contract is an agreement but every agreement is not a contract so as with this statement every agreement is not a contract then we need to find out what agreements are contract and for this we need to look at section 10 it says all agreements are contract if they are made by free consent of the parties competent to contract for a lawful consideration and with a lawful object and are not hereby expressly declared to be void so if we look at the important elements then we find that valid contract requires first of all free consent of the parties now free consent of the parties is dealt from section 13 to section 22 wherein section 13 defines what consent is section 14 says when consent is not free that is in what all circumstances we'll say that the consent is not a free consent and it'll be vitiated so consent is vitiated if it is given under undue influence coercion misrepresentation fraud or mistake and then section 15 to 22 defines all these terms and the consequences if the contract is vitiated by any of these reasons secondly parties must be competent to contract and section 11 and 12 deal with competency of party section 11 bolta hai first of all the party should be major of sound mind and not disqualified by any law to which he is subject uske baad section 12 bas define karta hai ki kab parties what is sound mind basically after this the third condition is lawful consideration fourth is lawful object and both these conditions are defined under section 23 and 24 of indian contract act fifth is the agreement should not be expressly declared as void क्योंकि अगर अग्रीमेंट वॉइड हुआ देन द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विल बी वॉइड आई बिन इश्योर दैट इज इट विल बी वॉइड फ्रॉम द वेरी बिगिनिंग एंड द कंडीशन अंडर विच द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इज वॉइड इज डेल्ट अंडर सेक्शन ट्वेंटी फाइव टू थर्टी प्लस दर इज अनादर एडिशनल कंडीशन फॉर अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट टू बी वैलिड कॉन्ट्रैक्ट दैट इज द पार्टीज मस्ट हैव एन इंटेंशन टू क्रिएट अ लीगल रिलेशनशिप ऑल राइट सो अब ये इंटेंशन टू क्रिएट लीगल रिलेशन क्या होता है This principle is discussed under a very important decision of Balfour versus Balfour. In this case, me, what happens? There is a husband and wife, and they are enjoying their leave in England. But after some time, the husband had to leave, अपने काम के लिए to Ceylon. But उसकी wife उसको accompany नहीं कर पाती, and she decides to stay back in England. 
देन हर हजबेंड प्रोमिस हर दैट वो उसको थर्टी पाउंड अ मंथ देगा एज प्रोबेबल एक्सपेंस ऑफ मेंटेनेंस बट आफ्टर सम टाइम डिफरेंसेज अराइज बिटवीन दीज पार्टीज एंड दे डिसाइड टू सेपरेट एंड इसके बाद द अमाउंट ऑफ थर्टी पाउंड ऑल्सो फॉल्स इन टू अरियर एंड द वाइफ डिसाइड्स टू सू द हजबेंड फॉर दिस अरियर बट वाइफ एक्शन टू रिकवर द अरियर वॉज डिसमिस्ड बाय द कॉर्ट एंड लॉर्ड एटकिन एक्सप्लेन दिस प्रिंसिपल एज देर आर अग्रीमेंट बिटवीन पार्टीज विच डू नॉट रिजल्ट इन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विद इन द मीनिंग ऑफ दैट टर्म इन आर लॉ बिकॉज द वेरियस काइंड ऑफ अग्रीमेंट फॉर इंस्टेंस लेट से टू पार्टीज अग्री टू टेक अ वॉक टूगेदर और देर आर अग्रीमेंट्स वेर दर इज एन ऑफर एंड एक्सेप्टेंस ऑफ हॉस्पिटैलिटी बट दीज ट्रांजेक्शन और अग्रीमेंट डू नॉट नेसेसरीली रिजल्ट इन टू अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट क्योंकि देर इज नो इंटेंशन इन दीज कॉन्ट्रैक्ट द पार्टीज आर नॉट इंटेंडेड दैट दे शैल बी अटेंडेड बाई लीगल कॉन्सिक्वेंसिस so the intention of party is to be naturally ascertained from the terms of the agreement and the surrounding circumstances for instance in case of business transactions it is 100% of the times that parties intend that if there is any breach it will be attended by legal consequence but if we talk about family or social events then it's not so right so we need to ascertain the intention of the parties as to if breach occurs do they intend that the party should be attended by legal consequences or not after this the element of enforceability makes a contract a valid contract so what does the term enforceable means enforceable means that if, if there is any breach of contract by one party then jo agreed party hai that can approach the court and get it legally enforced now the court can issue the direction to the party who has breached the contract to either perform the contract or compensate the suffering party in form of damages so when the aggrieved party can bring a legal action and claim damages for his suffering from the court the contract is enforceable all right thank you guys if you like the content then please like share and subscribe to law storming channel and if you have any suggestion please comment your suggestion in the comment box below मिलते हैं अगले वीडियो में बाय बाय